Hello world! Curses and madness be upon you all my friends. I am Euclidean Vision, the emotional support, and we're back today with yet another tier list because everybody's still stuck inside so I'm going to be smashing out as many videos as I can while I can. And to sort of just expand off yesterday's video that was sort of ranking like character concepts and backstory, uh, today we're just going to be looking at what's possibly going to be a quicker topic of sort of the potential storylines that will, could be coming up for each of these characters either in Overwatch 2 or in the potential Overwatch animated series. And so Anna, starting back at the beginning, Anna we at least know has a dilemma with Farah to be dealing with, like those two have a lot of unresolved issues between them to be sorting out. But Anna and Farah probably aren't coming into contact anytime just yet. Anna's gone off with Soldier 76 to potentially deal with Talon in their own way. So we know some sort of definitive future ground for Anna in her and Farah. Farah's got way more to actually change and learn and develop from this. They both do. But yeah, these two, when they finally get to hash it out about why do you not let me join Overwatch? Oh, it was for this reason. Oh, that's a pretty shit reason. Fuck you. That could be really fucking interesting. Depends where they go with it. Um, and actually to stick with a semi-related character, yeah, Anubis. Jeff Kaplan said very recently that they really want to tell the story of the god AI that's in the Temple of Anubis. And uh, Talon attacked the temple recently, potentially to steal Anubis away for nobody in particular. Maybe. I don't know. We don't know at present. But yeah, there's definitely some definitive intrigue going on there with Anubis. They very well could be like the crux of what allows uh, Overwatch 2 to happen, for instance. Ash. There's no definitive, very clear, like obvious way forward for Ash at present. She's sort of served her purpose and now she's done. Just back to the deadlock gang and chilling, going around committing crimes. Cool. Uh, Athena. With the release of Dr. Liao and, La and Echo, there could at least be more to see from Athena now? Question mark? Like, I'm sure that... Um, it might just be a one-off thing, but I'm sure that Mondata is apparently the announcer on at least the Montreal map in Overwatch 2, which suggests that Athena might not be the announcer at all anymore. Well, you know, it might just be a specific map thing, but if she's not at all, then it could suggest that she's starting to get her own either sort of story character or maybe even develop into an actual hero, which, I mean, is pretty pointless after Echo, to be honest, but... So, Baptiste. Well, we do know that Baptiste is heading to join Overwatch. That's at least his intent. Or he was at least heading to find Mercy, which would ultimately lead him to Overwatch. Unless he actually manages to meet Mercy before Zero Hour, and we just haven't seen that now. Yeah, unsure on that one. Well, uh, yeah, we know he at least has a definitive way forward, which is sort of basically the baseline <laughs> for being in B tier, I think, like a definitive way forward. Uh, and then up from here is when it starts like, actually getting into the, into the more sort of interesting stuff. Bastion, yeah, definitely things to come. There's definitely like stuff to come from Bastion, like it could be S tier. What Bastion has to offer us. But he's still pretty early on, yeah, he's still pretty early on in his story. And there could be more dilemmas for him to come, like dangerous dilemmas that affect more than just him. Yeah, okay, that's going up there. Their dilemma only really affects them unless Farah goes and does something reckless because of it. So, yeah, okay, Bastion jumps up into the S tier. Brigitte. Yeah, she at least hits the B tier because there's got to be some sort of definitive way forward with her and Reinhardt's relationship. <laughs> Theoretically, when she learns why Reinhardt got kicked out of Overwatch? I think that learning how and why will change her opinion of him to an extent and put her through some sort of like personal journey where she has to rediscover her own sort of belief in her own ideals. I think that that could be interesting for Brigitte, but there's nothing really clear going forward. Like, at present, she could just join up with Overwatch and start to prove herself as an Overwatch member. Like, we could always have a passing the torch thing 
at some point, you know, eventually, but, you know, that's... Well, that, that's all a bit more potential rather than anything definitive, but we at least know with Brigitte there's something to move forward into. Uh, as you're there, I'm gonna actually... I mean, you're only gonna be able to go into C. I mean, all the mecha pilots are only really gonna be able to go into C. Where's Overlord gone? There he is. Yeah, they're only really gonna be able to go into C at best. I mean... Yeah, we should really put them all in D. Ash at least goes above them. Because, no, I mean, there's so much more of a clear way forward to go with them, actually. Like, their interrelationship, their, like, their interpersonal relationships, and how Mecha runs. Like, there could be so much discord in here, never mind what this guy could be fucking up to if he is connected to Talon. I might do a quick theory video on that over the next few days, if anyone's interested. Yeah, uh... The Mecha Squad at least have a more determinate, like, there's an idea of what could happen with them. Like, even just seeing how they deal with each other and the Grishin threat on a day-to-day -day basis is far more, like, of a clear way forward than anything we know about Ash at all. So, on to D.Va, who obviously outstrips her comrades... Doesn't have the clearest... I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's the potential that she'll join up with Overwatch, we could, which could cause some friction here. That would be interesting as well to see. Or we could even see the sort of political side of her life start to uh, cause friction within this and maybe cause problems for Korea itself. Like, especially if she were to leave Mecha to join Overwatch, that could really, like, cause some ruckus up in here. So, yeah, there's a lot of potential for D.Va... No, there's nothing as sort of personal as maybe what Brigitte's could be. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Doomfist, I mean, we just know that this shit's come from Doomfist. He's got a plan for when everything goes down. When the when the war starts. He's got, he, he yeah, yeah. Uh, Echo, shit, S tier as well, man. A tier, because we don't know what's to come from you. Bastion's got a pretty clear way forward, and it'll be cool, as do the rest of S tier. Echo's f further stuff is going to be cool, and it's going to be about her discovering herself, but that's way more sort of vague than maybe sort of what these guys are going for, or, and sort of as is Farah and Anna's dilemma. Genji... I don't see a lot going forward for Genji, to be honest. Like, his character arc is relatively complete in, in ways. Which is cool, like, he can just sit there, top of C tier, just sort of chilling like, eh, I'm, I'm done, kind of. We'll see some cool shit from him, of course, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of character development to do there, unless you send him back down the path of not liking who he is and being all rage mode again, do you know? Uh, Hanzo, I feel, has got far more to come. Um, and yeah, his... Yeah, I'd put him about there. Like, these three here have, a, like, strong familial conflicts to resolve. Uh, in fact, you can actually go up there, because... Anna's got sort of her own... A bunch of her own stuff going on, like her own self-doubts. Her mission with Jack... And her sort of distancing feelings towards Farah, whereas Farah, basically all that Farah's got is all of this emotional conflict that has arisen from her mother. Like, so that is going to be more fleshed out in Farah, I feel. So, yeah, these two have got like genuine personal emotional conflict to resolve with someone else that's like far more defining of a feature of their character compared to these two who just have some family issues they need to sort out, but it's not the majority of like what their character sort of is based around uh the iris get up there <laughs> i mean this is a semi unfair tier s tier to be honest isn't it uh the junker queen um not a definitive way forward but i think cool shit if it is to come like there's going to be some cool you know uh, with the null sector war uh oh yeah i mean like she she's gonna be responding to Null Sector waging war on the world. Holy shit! Yeah, she is. 
Uh, Junkrat. Oh, man. Sorry, man. I just don't see it. Oh, your treasure. Your treasure could be interesting, depending on what it is. I kind of hope that you stumbled across the vault for a biocomputer in the centre of the Australian Omnium. And you think it's a vault for treasure, but the actual treasure is the knowledge that Omnium's uh, advanced learning artificial intelligence was actually like based on human brains. Or something of that like that blurs the line between what Omnix and humans are just that little bit more on like a physical level to make people be like, oh, but wait, but robots exist. Yes, the the, the Omnix exist, man. Like, get it in your fucking heads. Like, <laughs> oh, ooh, Dr. Liao. I think that, I mean, we could either this, we could either see nothing. No, we're pretty destined to see something from her. She has to go sort of with Echo, I reckon, Dr. Liao. Uh, Lucio, there's definitely stuff to come, but it's just not really determinate what it would be. We know that he's got the Rio mission coming up, so he's... Oh, he's actively joining Overwatch. Oh, okay. Uh, definitely puts him at least in there. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, Lynx, you've probably been forgotten about. I wouldn't be surprised if you have. If you are to come back, I would fucking really enjoy that. That'd be great. Mauga, there's going to be more from Mauga, but it's very indeterminate what. You're going to go here I think yeah that'll do like whatever you do it's gonna be fun but yeah you're not doing it just yet uh, Max we know that there is definitely something coming for you in Overwatch 2 at least based on the trailer because you want to back out of something involving talent that Doomfist speaks to him about so there's like there definitely seems to be plot progressing with Maximilian in Overwatch 2. So at least it's something definitive, and it's most likely going to be plot-based. I would kind of like it if it were, like, a character development, and he's there like, yeah, I mean, I was happy to fuck over, like, a lot of Omnix, but I don't want to just kill, like, all the Omnix, like... That there's a line, <laughs> like even I, Maximilian, have a line. Like yeah, that would be interesting to re that that'd be really interesting to see. But yeah, as we don't know exactly what his definitive thing is, uh, that yeah, there we go. That makes sense. McCree, ooh, McCree's off to do mysterious things. He's off to do mysterious things. Uh, I hope he's going to blag his way into Talon as like an undercover agent but Talon will obviously know that he's an undercover agent but they'll sort of let him because he does it in the right way or they think they can make use of him or yeah I think that you could have some like really cool fun blatant covert ops sort of tongue in cheek sort of thing going on with him and Talon I think that could be really fun but you could actually then like develop the Talon characters out a bit more, make them a bit more relatable, a bit more understandable, and maybe have McCree sort of have some doubts and be like, holy shit, maybe these guys have got a point. Yeah, that'd be really cool to see. I think that'd be a great idea. He's got some shit to hash out with Gabriel Reyes. So yeah, that's definitely on the cards, I reckon. May, aside from sort of growing into someone who is capable of like holding her own in a fight and gaining like that sort of confidence that seems to be coming with Overwatch 2 anyway uh, unless she's sorting out like the climatological anomaly and that's made back into like a bigger plot point there's not loads going for me like she's maybe like a decent way into that sort of character arc at this point I think Mercy Valkyrie did just go through sort of an element of character growth for her so she's again relatively decently along her character path there could be some cool shit for her to come of course but like it'd be cool if she could become a proper symbol for hope and peace and prosperity and progress and all that jazz again but maybe sort of actualize it into i don't know changing how healthcare provision works globally so that everyone's looked after i'm not pushing a subtle agenda that healthcare, like, free at the point of sale at the behest of the government is, like, a good idea. <laughs> I'm not, like, 
doing subtle propaganda for the NHS here. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's potentially stuff to come from Mercy, but what exactly that would be isn't isn't very clear at all. Uh, Null Hector, I mean, uh, him and Null Sector are making fucking waves. Yeah, there, there's a lot going on up there. Uh, basically, everything about Null Hector is stuff that we have to learn eventually. <laughs> Moira... Hmm, a character who again is probably relatively f far along their character arc. Just there's probably like more interesting stuff to see from her than either of these two, I'm afraid. Arissa, definitely lots to see. I'm going to put you up there with Echo because Echo's kind of stealing your whole thing. Um, we've got you and Iffy to be developed quite hugely very soon. So yeah, okay, that that's cool. Well, that'll put you like slightly above here. You've got a far more determinate way forward and someone to actually relate to, whereas this is a whole sort of mind meldy relationship uh, present. Uh, well, she is kind of her, but she's hopefully going to grow into her own her, but maybe still keep all, all of her as well. Echo's weird. Shut up. Fuck off. <laughs> like, uh, oh. Damn it, Gabriel. Right, again, as with the last tier list, either there or there. <laughs> Basically, like, either another to see, and he's fucking boring, and he he's taking himself really seriously, and he's just a rubbish character, or, yeah, like, he's doing everything he's doing for some actually pretty understandable big-picture reasons. I'd like to see that. I think there's definitely more genuine stuff to see from... Uh, Reaper, but because it's actually not that determinate, you go. Oh wow, yeah, you go like here, no, there, mm. Mm. something like that, maybe. No, you're you're so up in the air that yeah, you're you're going by there, I think. Ryan, there's plenty to see from Ryan. Like, there's plenty, like, we've definitely got the whole passing of the torch thing to do at some point. Whether he actually dies in doing it or not. Because that'd be, you know, we would mirror the whole Baldrick thing really well, but then it would also be like, you've done this. Like, yeah, it would depend on execution for that. How exactly you do that. Uh, e e e e Well, yeah, Brigitte's is definitely related to Ryan in some way, so... And Ryan does actually have the dilemma of why he got kicked out. And go there. Yeah, I think that Ryan could be pretty fucking interesting going forward. On like a personal and sort of like a plot based level. Hog. It's not really like a clear way forward for him as well, just like Junkrat. But at least say like, um, Wasted Land gave us way more an insight really into how like, how Roadhog thinks. Uh,. And he's just a, like, let's just fucking lay waste to it all, man. <laughs> like, the world fucking deserves us. Like, yeah. Uh, Hog could be up to some more sort of, like, genuinely motivated mischief. But that's what it is? Yeah, really not sure. So, yeah, we'll put him on the bottom of B tier. Sanjay, you might never appear again. I mean, you probably will. Doing something nefarious staring coldly into the distance um but at this point we have no idea whether that's actually going to happen uh and it'd be interesting to know whether like the ideals you present are yours or vishkar's or how much vishkar agrees with what you do what, what all that sort of arrangement is there's a lot to learn about you i guess isn't there yeah okay you go at, yeah nah, let me just for the sheer amount of stuff that you could sort of unveil or sort of bring to the table about how things are working in the world at present. Like, Hog's probably got more interesting stuff to do, but, do you know? Sigma, oh, uh, yeah, it's probably, there's nothing determinate at all. But whatever Sigma does... Yeah, Mauga's going to be going after Batiste. And has got 
genuine views about the world to hold, or a Sigma is sort of just maybe sitting crazy at present. We don't know his exact law state at present, Sigma. That'd be really nice to learn. Sojourn, um, definitely stuff to, I mean, yeah, there at least. Like, she's coming back to Overwatch, and when Overwatch 2 releases, we'll hopefully learn what the fuck she's all about. <laughs> uh, Soldier... Yeah, there's definitely, we gotta put him at least around Anna, because they're going off on and doing shit together. He hasn't got any, he's got the potential for the whole revenge thing to really, like, consume who he is. That could actually stick him there. Um, but we'll leave it like that. Sombra, oh, there's, I mean, there's gonna be so much interesting shit from Sombra, like, there's no even point in fucking discussing it. Sven, you probably don't even exist anymore. Symmetra, uh, there's gonna be interesting stuff, but it's not all that definitive what you'd be playing with. There, that makes a bit more sense. Um, Sanjay, get out of it. Yeah, you guys can go down here. Oh no, we, we know that there's stuff going on with you. Yeah, that'll work. No, whatever Sigma does will be more interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with that for now. Torbjorn. We know he's got a mission in Overwatch 2 where Brig and Ryan go to get him and Bastion. So yeah, let's at least stick him there. It'd be nice to see if these two really do have like the same sort of familial conflict that's going on here. Because there definitely seems to be a bit of sort of like farther distance yeah a bit too consumed by his work to have time for his daughter although she managed to learn a lot of his work from him but is all their relationship is his work like oh oh that's be a dad man <laughs> Do you know uh tracer nothing really determinate that i can think of going forward just sort of you know Overwatch is back. Yeah, there's no like big story to come for Tracer as far as I can think. Whereas at least these have things even though like we don't know exactly what some of these things to, to be developed are, they've got stuff to develop. Tracer kind of doesn't. Uh yeah, I also want to put her there, just because she's got the least, like, character development to be done. Like, Ash has loads to do, but it just, what the fuck would it be? <laughs> do you know? Uh, Widowmaker, yeah, there's, there's a fucking big old backstory to be told for you. Uh, yeah. Okay, nefarious current dealings, uh, but it's only suspect, we don't know, but whatever it is, it's going to be interesting. Determinate backstory to learn, joining Overwatch to change their lives for the better, potential, like, world change, but we have no fucking clue. Yeah, okay, th th that all makes sense. Uh, Winston is again sort of yeah. <laughs> he's he's recalled Overwatch. It unless there's sort of the an arc of him sort of learning to become a leader and taking responsibility and stuff. That'd be really interesting actually. Oh, if they do that. Yeah, I mean if they do that, that's go he's going up fucking here there. He's going next to fucking Soldier. That makes sense. Hopefully, that's what they're going to do with him. That'd be really fucking cool, man. Ball. Oh. I don't know what they do with you, man. You're just you're just rolling around, goofing off. Yeah, you do you, man. You stay there. You're, you're not really getting up to much, and that's possibly okay. Uh, Zarya. Yeah, she's like the holder of the big secret at present for Russia... Something's probably going to be made of that. Like, you don't get someone to hold the big secret, or someone doesn't take the big secret upon themselves without then having the dilemma of, fuck, I need to tell people the big secret. She's also got her 
a, a very clear dilemma with her attitude towards Omnix that is there to be worked through, as opposed to maybe someone like Junkrat or Roadhog, who maybe will never resolve their differences with Omnix, although that would be a, like a long-term goal to maybe go for. Zarya has at least shown she's been put in sort of like proximity to those ideas of hers have been challenged now which means that she's actually able to start thinking about those ideas so yeah we'll go up like here i think that's a good spot for zarya there uh then zenyatta um i mean it's i mean like the iris it's not determinate but what a I mean, I'm tempted to do that, because whatever you are, it's probably not going to be as interesting as who Zen is. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I hope you all get what I'm saying. I mean, I is it slightly unfair that this top line is actually, like, replete with bots? And then, like, two of the most cybernetically enhanced humans <laughs> that we have? Like... Mm, actually, I'm kind. Of, I'm a little tempted to put Arissa up here because we have an actual like determinate story coming, which is we don't know what that story is, I guess. <laughs> and she's got a lot of learning to do. Ah, but then so does Echo Man. Echo really stole your thunder on that one, didn't she? That's really a real shame. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. I, I think that's fine. I mean, the the potential upcoming stories for Overwatch could be so much more wide and varied than even just this set of characters and the ideas i've put forward none of them could ever be explored uh there could be some way more obvious stuff for some of these characters that is going to come up way sooner that i've just totally ignored because i'm there like hmm i wonder what the dynamic of anna and farah's character will be like in 2030 when they actually talk for the first time again <laughs> Do you know like so Thanks for staying with me to this point, guys. I hope you've been enjoying these sort of looser, more regular, simpler videos. I figured as we're all stuck inside, it'd just be nice to kind of get as much done as I can while I can. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tier list. If you have any changes you'd recommend to point out that, like, you haven't got a clue what you're talking about, you clearly envision, like, you, you don't know anything, tell me. Hit, hit me up in the comments. Make, make a point about why I've really missed out on a little gem in this tier list about stuff that could be coming up that I've ignored because I'd like to think about what we've got to come. Hopefully the Overwatch animated series turns up soon. Hopefully we get to learn more about Overwatch too soon. But for now, that's everything. Thanks for staying with me again. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I've been Euclidean Vision, the emotional support. Take care of yourselves out there, teammates, especially at this time. Go in peace, and may the glorious light of Best Girl shine within you. Bye-bye.